If you're not yet ready for solar panels, there's another inexpensive yet effective way to bring solar power to your backyard. Solar panels can run your electric dryer, but a clothesline uses the sun to bring other benefits as well. The clothes just smell so fresh, and uh, surprisingly enough, it's great for the color. The color just stays vibrant after many washes, and uh, in the summer, it just dries in a matter of an hour, an hour and a half, and you take them in and they're just fresh and ready to be folded and packed away. Even in the winter, even if the snow is practically touching the bottom of the sheets, that's almost better. They just come out with the most unique, fresh smell when you bring them in, especially in the winter. So a clothesline can be put up and used in any season. Rick Leland, owner of Remodeling Remedies and Punch Lists, shows us how. So tell us, what's the first step if we're going to put up a clothesline? Well, the first thing you want to do is take a look at your site and see which way the sun is shining in so you can use the uh, sun to dry your clothes. And you're going to start off obviously by picking out your rope. You want to get the proper length. Usually what we do is we'll pace it off just by foot. And if, uh, say, we have 60 paces, we're going to times it by two. We've got 120 foot. And we'll add, you know, maybe 10 or 15 feet to that to make sure, you know, we, we have exact dimensions and uh, have enough line to do it. And uh, a couple other things you're going to need is the eye bolts, which are right here. Um, ideally, you get stainless steel, so you don't have to worry about it corroding and rusting and leaving marks on your home or wherever you're attaching it to. And um, then you're going to need a couple pulleys and also just a line tightener. So Rick, we can get all of this equipment at the local hardware store? Yeah, everything you see here is, is readily available at any hardware store in any town. Okay, so what do we think of next? We're going to start by drilling out so we can put in these eye bolts. These are 3 8 eye bolts. You want to try to get something that's roughly 3 inches long or so, somewhere in that, so it actually has some meat to go into and grab, you know, it's going to stay secure. With a 3 8 eye bolt, you want to go with a drill bit that's a little bit smaller. So okay. a quarter inch drill bit or somewhere in that range. You don't want to go too big because you want to make sure that the eye bolt threads are going to actually grip the wall. Okay. So we just start up by picking the spot and drilling in. What do you need to think about when you're drilling I, that I don't hit something? Yeah, when you're drilling in, first of all, the first thing you want to make sure is that you're going into a solid surface. Okay. So you don't want to drill in the middle of the house where you might be between studs, where you're really going to be only attaching to plywood and siding. You know, usually the corners of every house, even back in the older houses, are going to be a solid corner. Okay. That's an ideal spot. Also around windows, outside of your window trim, in that area, you usually have a double stud in that area, so you're going to be able to hit something solid there and probably have no wiring or plumbing or any sort running through that area. Those are your safest spots. Once you have the hole drilled, it's, it's pretty simple, really. Just take your eye bolt, okay. come up, start it into the hole All by right. hand. All right, as soon as you get it started, it's going to start getting tighter. We usually will just grab a screwdriver or any type of uh, you know leverage tool that you can use, and we just stick it in and spin it, because you're not going to be able to put them in all by hand. It's okay. going to get too tight for you, which is a good thing. So just spin it all the way in. Now you got to basically do the same thing down the other end. Just drill out the hole. Great. And just repeat the procedure. So what's the next step? The next thing we're going to do is just attach the pulleys. We just start off just by hooking this on. Okay. Okay, pretty simple. Easy. Okay, just pull it into here. Okay. Okay, you just take this pulley right here yep. and hook it right in the same manner. It's just looped right over the side right here. Okay, okay. And just easy. Yep, we're going to do the same thing on the other end. And hook, it, hook this pulley right back on the same way. Okay. The next step is your rope. This piece right here is a line tightener. What does the, that do? This is an necessity. What you do is when you put the rope through and you tie it off, which I'm going to show you, you're going to see a sag in the rope. There's going to be a line sticking through this on this side, and you're basically going to pull the rope through, and it's going to tighten the line right up, and it locks it in place, and then Good. your line stays tight. And if it ever were to loosen up a little bit on you, all you have to do is go back and just give it a little snug. They hold pretty well, though. You probably won't have too much uh, adjustment after it's in. Perfect. So we're going to start off by feeding. I, I usually like to start feeding it from the top so that when we put this line tightener on, it's on the bottom of the line, so the weight of it isn't just holding down the top into it. Just feed it through. You have to kind of hold both ends of the line as you're pulling it through, because if you don't, it's just going to get tangled in there. You have to keep coming back. Okay. I, I usually just hold on to both of them like this, okay. and just start walking towards the other end. If you want, if you can hold this end for me, just keep okay. a little tension on it. Yeah. I'm going to do the same thing on this end. Okay. I'm just going to feed it right through the top, come down through the pulley. We'll just take our knife. Yep. And we'll just cut it off so we have a nice clean end. Okay. On it like that. Great. Place the knife down. And then you pull on this piece okay. and just slide it through. If 
can keep the slack on it. Might take a little persuading to get it through, but now it's through. Right. And you can see it grabs the line nice and tight. If you see the, the further I pull it, it still stays there. On the other side. Yep. And you pull on it. So. Okay. Then you just take the other end. And you go through. It has this little ring on here. Yep. Okay. Pull it through. Okay. We we'll usually just let the rope go at that point. Okay. And we'll pull it tight like this. And you're just going to tie just your standard knot. It's okay if it's not real tight. Let it hang for now because that's what this uh, line tighten is for. Okay. Pull a few knots in it. So you know it's nice and snug. We usually tie three or four knots in it just so just they're on there. Just standard knots. Just a standard knot. That's okay. it. And that'll stay there. Okay. Okay. Once you have that, you can trim that end off. All right. Really just for aesthetic reasons. Yeah. Just trim it right off. Okay. You know, leave a little bit hanging out on it, you know, maybe an inch or so. Okay. Okay. In case you need to pull on it and, and adjust it at a later time. Yep. Okay. Now you're going to do the same thing with this line tightener. The way it works, really, you just do this. You can see okay. if you look at the line, you'll see yep. it's starting to tighten up. And that's it. Once you do that, we usually recommend that the people just tie a knot also on the end of that just to keep it from sliding off and do, you know, probably a double knot again. But leave a little bit more hanging on this one. Okay. Okay. That? Just so you can, if you have to adjust it, you're going to have something to pull onto. You need that leverage. If it's too short, you're right. only going to be using your fingers. You won't be able to get a whole hand to grip onto it. Okay. So what do we need to think about when we're hanging our load? Now, the first thing you want to remember is that you have this line tightener on here. So you want to start your clothes right at that. That way that you don't run out of line. If you start it when it's halfway across, yep. it's going to hit the other end of the pulley and you're going to run out of line. So this is getting the maximum use out of, of the length of line, which is roughly 60 feet or so here. Okay. Okay. Great. You just grab a couple clothespins. Yep. Out of your clothespin line. Great. And uh, clip the first one right on there. Yeah. Okay. Wheel it out a little bit, and uh, you know, hang them up any manner that you like. Just let it hang there, and uh, clip your shirt on, and keep on continuing. Just start the next one right after that. Okay. And keep wheeling, and you can see, you know, you got a pretty good distance here. Take it right there out. There it goes. You see the sunshine already I with the do. shadow on the ground out there. That a, is wonderful. It's a great thing. There's no question about it. I mean, a lot of people don't think of this, you know, but it's a really a simple, inexpensive way of using solar power. Well, thanks for joining us today, Rick, to show us how easy it is to put up our own clothesline. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. It was fun. And thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.